Hi there, so today's video is uh, gonna be about making exercise part of your life. Today I have Linda Evans with me. She does a successful blog on Instagram called Behind the Woman. And today I'm simply gonna be asking her, how did you make exercise part of your life? Well, Johnny, to start with, I absolutely hated sport when I was at school. I can't catch a ball, so I was never picked for, for, for teams and then, I got to the age of 30 and I started skiing and I suddenly wanted to be the best in the class and I found my competitiveness and I needed to be fit to ski. So that began a new journey for me. So we started working together, what, say a year ago? Something like that, yeah. And uh, you initially came to me because you understood that you had a few knee issues and you wasn't quite ready to give in to that yet and get surgery, um, rightly so. And um, we started working towards strengthening your body towards a skiing trip, is that right? Yep. Yeah, and how do you feel that went? So yeah, fast forward, I'd had a freak ski accident four years ago, and that stopped me being able to do a lot of the exercise, exercise classes I had previously done. So I realized I needed to build up my strength, and I know I'm useless if I go to a gym on my own, I walk around and I get bored and I don't know what I'm doing. I think everyone so, feels like that. <laughs> so I came to you for your expertise, and to try and try and improve my leg and my own physical strength. Yeah, I mean, you've since had surgery. Um, your knee was in, in it was in a pretty bad way, and, and really, I think you'd exhausted all options. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and and now you've had your surgery, and she's recovered very very quickly. Um, how long has it taken you? Three months. Three months to be standing here talking to me and having well no pain. Would you say? Yeah. Brilliant. What can you say to that? <laughs> also now, I've got a boat, so uh, yeah. I need to be able to climb on my boat and jump around, uh, pull up sails. So I also need to be fit for the summer. And apart from that, it's total vanity. I know my fitness is important to me, how my body looks, and also I want to be strong. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, a lot of people feel that, you know, they can't say that when actually, if we're all honest with each other, that's mostly why we all go to the gym, don't we? We all go to the gym to feel and look better and to feel better in our clothes and to, to look nice, right? That's exactly what we do. So today, um, the idea is that we're going to go through a short workout of things that me and Linda have been doing together that she's found beneficial in our everyday life. And um, the, the, the concept of the workout is to actually improve your life, to become stronger and to feel slightly fitter for everyday tasks, right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think it's important because I regularly go up to London from Cornwall where we are and I need to be able to carry on doing exercise when I'm not with Johnny. And she does <laughs> very, very well. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is going through a pushing motion, uh, pulling motion, squatting, which is, we're going to call sitting down and standing up, and also uh, some form of what's called a deadlift, which will be basically safely picking things up off the ground. And the reason we're picking these things is because I feel quite strongly um, that they're all movements that we do day to day, and that by training them, making them stronger, making them more efficient and optimal, that is going to improve the quality of life for, for almost everyone. Um, you told me earlier that you found something easier, what was it pulling the anchor up? Yeah, that's right, that's back. right, pulling the anchor of the boat up, which is... And I, I think the, the key thing though, is that I also come back to Johnny because because if I do it just on my own, again, I'm going to lose my motivation. Um, but I'm also not going to really track how I'll improve. Okay, I'll know that I can pick up my shopping bags out of the boot of the car more easily. But that probably I won't even realise. But then when I come back and train with him, then I can be reassured that I am on, a, on an upward track all the time. Yeah, exactly right. So we're going we're gonna to get started. We're going to start off with our first exercise, which I think will be the squat. Happy with that? Cool. Great. So the first exercise we're going to start with today will be the squat. The, the main goal here is to actually get Linda to do a freestanding bodyweight squat. However, as I mentioned earlier, she has just come back from surgery um, on her knee. So what we're doing is we're protecting her by putting a box here at the bottom so that her depth, uh, she doesn't go, A, doesn't go too low and B, if, if, if there is any issue, she can just sit down safely. But we've also got a suspension trainer to help her balance at the top. As I say, the goal is to get a freestanding squat, but suspension trainers, you don't have to go for a TRX, you can go for an, uh, a cheaper version, which you can find on Amazon for roughly around 20 to 30 pounds. But the, the, the goal here is to ultimately take the suspension trainer away and also the box away so that she can freestand the squat. So I'm gonna talk Linda through what she needs to do now and um, 
ultimately, we'll, we'll, like I said, we're going for a freestanding squat. So Linda, what I'd like you to do is just move your feet to just outside the shoulder width apart, and I want you to point your toes slightly outwards. So slightly wider if you can. That's it, great. And I want you to create tension in your quads and your glutes. I want you to take a deep breath and hold it in your stomach. And then I want you to break at the knees and then push back with your hips and, and glutes until you feel the box and then push through your heels to come back up again. And then finish the squat by pushing through with the hips. That's it. And now repeat. So what you'll notice as well with Linda is that you can't actually see her feet, but um, with her feet, what I'm asking her to do is push through the ground, through the back, through the heels to generate force to come upwards. That will also increase the power through her posterior chain. That's great. So our next exercise will be a pushing exercise, as I explained earlier. Um, pushing is, every, is an everyday part of our day. Um, so let's go with something nice and easy that you can do in most places and start with a push-up. Now most people know a push-up to be somewhere where they're on the ground and they're pushing away from the ground, but not everybody's able to do that. Some people don't quite have that tricep or, or chest strength yet to, to be able to perform that. So a good way to start will be using a wall. So Lynn's going to demo. Um, she can actually do press-ups, but we're going to show you how to do it on the wall. So if you take a natural step back, that's it, right? And then just, just as you would on the floor, you'd imagine if we turn her on her side there that she's on the ground and this is the ground. And you're going to go just outside of your shoulders, bring your hands slightly further down. So they're just under the shoulder, that's it. Start with straight arms, head up, take a deep breath, create abdominal tension and bend at the elbows. Keep it nice and straight and then push. Good, so just do two or three more of those. Really generating force through here. And for most people um, who can't do press ups, this is enough for now. And the progression would be the further you bring your feet away from the wall, the harder the exercise would be. So if you, if you brought your feet further back, that then starts to make it slightly harder again. So you probably need to bring your hands down too. That's right, but great, good. Obviously watch your nose. <laughs> That's great. So the next progression will be a full press up. So here we are doing a full press up or at least a press up on the ground for now. What you see here is a box press up. So you're in a box shape as you can see. And what that does is it makes the actual press up slightly easier. So now again, just like you would on the wall, you put your hands just outside the shoulder width. And what I want you to do is spread your fingers out and really grab the entire floor with your hands. I want you to take a deep breath to create abdominal tension and then just bend at the elbows. That's it, and then press. Good. All right, it's good. Now what I'm going to do is just move your knees slightly back to your, what's called a three quarter length press up and then bring the hips down. So just slightly down, that's it. So automatically that's going to be slightly harder. How's your knee on that, okay? Yeah, it's all right. Good. And, <laughs> and I'll just do the same again, if you don't mind for. Brilliant, great. Okay, so if you sit up fully, so then obviously that was a box, we did the, the wall press up, we've done a box press up and now a three quarter length press up. And then the next natural progression would be to do a full press up, which would mean bringing your knees up off the floor and being onto your feet into what's called a plank position. And you'll be able to do a full press up. I won't force Linda to do that unless you want. So our next exercise is gonna be um, what's called a deadlift. And effectively what a deadlift is, is basically picking something heavy up off the floor. Um, so what we're gonna start with is with the kettlebell. Um, off of the floor here, the kettlebell here, I think what is that, about, about 12 kilograms. And um, Linda's going to take a stance where her heels are underneath her hips. And the reason I say so you might want to come slightly closer with your stance, just bring your feet slightly closer together. And you want to stack the joints. So you want the ankle joint, knee joint, and the hip joint all be in a nice line so that you can generate force through the ground in a nice straight line. Um, you're going to put a slight bend in the knees to give yourself a bit more mobility. So maybe slightly less than that. That's it. Good. And then you're going to reach down and pick up the kettlebell. But the objective here is to retract the shoulder blades up here. That's it. And keep a nice straight back and then stand up and bring the hips through. That's it. So Linda still has trouble with straightening this leg out completely. So that's going to be a factor here. But when you get to the bottom bit here, I want to push through the ground, through your heel. And come all the way back up again. Great. Good. So just do another few of those. Brilliant. Really force that hip through the top. That's 
very good and rest. Not everyone's got access to a kettlebell, so what you can do in replacement is I uh, bought this big bottle of water with this handle here, and uh, you know you can to make it heavier, you can fill it full of water to the, to the top. Or as Linda cleverly suggested just now, you can fill it full of sand if you live close to a beach or you want access to a sand. So what we we'll do is we'll put that there and just do the same again. So the objective here is always to remember that as much as you are lifting this off the ground, the real crux of this exercise is you have to imagine you're pushing the ground away. So when you're holding onto the weight, you're generating force by driving your heels into the ground and pushing the ground away. And the consequence of that is you end up standing nice and straight with the kettlebell in your hand. So our final exercise today is what's called a TRX low row. Um, Linda's there standing there holding the, the TRX there. And what she's gonna do now is start from standing, which will be the easiest way to do it. And you're going to lower yourself backwards, Linda. So if you can start doing that, that's it. And then what you're going to do is keep your chest up, brace your core by taking a deep breath and holding it in the stomach, and then pull yourself forward. But the emphasis has to be on the lats, so the back muscles here. So if you go all the way back and keep your chest up, that's it, good. And make sure that you feel that you're loading your lats. And now squeeze really hard in your hands and then pull forward. That's it, good. And then lean back. Good, so that is the, uh, that's the easier version of that exercise. So if you walk your feet forward, that's it. And then do it again, just do one or two. That's it. You can see now that's got progressively harder. And do a second one. And if you feel you're able, just walk your feet forward a little bit more and you'll see now that that's starting to become really quite tough. So keep them, keep them hips up. Engage that core, that's it, good. But as I said repeatedly, the real emphasis of this exercise isn't just to use the arms and the biceps and the forearms and the grip, it's also to really make sure that you're using them lats, them back muscles to really instigate the movement. Last one. So all these exercises are basic, really. However, they've been fundamental in helping me get moving over the last three months, six months. Um, after a freak ski accident four years ago, I broke my arm and damaged my knee. And there are various aspects that this has dramatically helped with. Um, first of all, with my arm, the shoulder stability that I've got from doing push-ups and the TRX, um, and really all the exercises I've done, has enabled me to get my strength back to be able to shove a case into the overhead locker on a plane, lift my uh, shopping bags out of the boot of my car, um, and generally feel much more strong in day-to-day -day living. Um, and certainly when I had my operation, uh, my knee operation, the afternoon, like two hours after I come around from the operation, physios came in and gave me this great expl explanation about how to get out of bed. And then I just went like that without using my hands because I was already had the strength in, in my legs, really, um, even though my knee was in absolute agony. And certainly in my recovery, these exercises have been absolutely mind-blowingly good to help me get back to 100% fitness. So we've spoken a great deal about rehabilitation, prehabilitation, but ultimately um, Linda has started training to get strong for her for a skin trip and then in turn for her knee operation. Um, and I think you've done that, right? Yeah. So, so what do you think's next? Well, I, I would say, um, and I, I keep saying, I'm incredibly vain. So my next step is to tone myself up all over, get my stomach flat for the summer. And I really strongly want to put the message out to you that whilst we've been talking about me and my rehabilitation, these are exercises for life and it's a mindset to, to make yourself look good and feel good. And it's mind and body that's important in my, um, in my world. So stand by for the vanity workout. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, if anybody wants to subscribe, like, share, that's much appreciated on both myself and Linda. Thank you. Bye.